Hello and welcome. Everyone. You don't have the clap. I'll clap. You clap. Oh, hi, hi, you don't have jump. the clap. I'll jump down as well. You don't have the clap. All right. I do not. Do you, I don't know. Do you not? <coughs> when was the last time you got tested? Because you never, you never know with you famous singers. <laughs> Michael, thanks a million for Stay coming. On. Welcome to the Wood from the Trees podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're a Donny Gall man. All right, that's it. Uh, why are you? Ah, uh, twenty eight. Do you describe yourself as an artist or a singer songwriter, or how would you describe yourself? Oh, I don't like to put myself in any boxes. Like, I don't know. I'd say singer songwriter. Singer songwriter. Yeah, yeah. I'd say singer songwriter. Yeah. And whereabouts in Donegal from? I come from Ardra. It's a, a small rural village southwest uh, Donegal. Um, big family. Out there. No. Not big at all, I'm an only child. Oh, she's another lonely child. <laughs> How you lonely were you? <laughs> I suppose, that's lonely. Jesus Christ. I don't think it was that lonely. You lived out the country though? I did. So you're... Next stop America, like. Yeah, no only child, no neighbours to play with. Oh, loads of neighbours, that's the thing. There must have been a boom that time, because when I was growing up, like, there was about maybe 15, maybe not 15, maybe... 10 or 11 ones are all kind of in around the one age like so did you go but to we are well out like well well out like did you go to a big school um primary school jesus people are going to be getting on to me now. I, I, I don't know maybe you'd have been lucky to have 60 or 70 in the whole school well like there were six in my class oh that's a small school and that was the biggest class i think maybe in another <laughs> class there was six in it as well yeah six or seven there might have been seven in one though when you're in a small school like that, can you get away with doing no homework ever? No. Well, like we had a we had a very good headmaster. Um, I'm not going to mention his name, but Go on, he would have he would have mentioned he would he would have made us speak Irish. Like, was it the Gaelic? Uh, no, it wasn't the Gaelic. But he would have made us speak it uh, even in breaks and that. So you wouldn't have got away. He was old school. Like mm. you wouldn't have got away with nothing. You got away with nothing. Absolutely nothing. Very strict. Um, no, but in a good way. Like were your parents good. strict? Jesus, no. Well, no, dad would dad would have been dad would have been fairly old school like. I came around mom handy enough like. What did your dad do? Uh, dad is a landscape gardener. And your mom? And mom, uh, she used to work in the chemist. Um, she's passed away there. Oh, do you sorry to hear that? I uh, know you're dead on. Long ago. Three year now. Three year now. Feels like yesterday, man. Does it still? Feels like yesterday. But um. Did she, how did she pass away, do you mind me ask? No, not at all. Um, she had pancreatic cancer. Um, ah, geez, it was, it was snappy. It was quick. What was that like as a, such a small family? How was it like? Well, we were lucky. We were lucky. Like, we had, we had very good support, like, you know, very, very good support. Um, and she was strong, which made it easier, you know. She wasn't, she wasn't big for cribbing about it, you know what I mean? She was strong. I was, like, me, I would have taken a lot of from my father around that time. Mm. And I definitely would have, now, looking back on it, I would have leaned on that man so much that time. Your dad? Oh, Jesus. Like, he, he would have, he would have, I would have learned a lot about what it is to be a man. And especially that time. But don't get me wrong, see now, like, I mean, the woman is the heart and soul of the, of the house. Mm. That is that is a fact. But um, that time, when she was in the depths of it, we had plenty of support, don't get me wrong, but uh, I definitely seen the value in, in, uh, in what a man, what a man is that time, like. Did it make you and your dad closer? We were always very close. That's another thing, like, we were very, very close, like, very close, like... I could say anything to that man, like, and it's the same with mom. I could say anything well, to the two of them. Um, tr wild big trust there. It's almost like having a bit, like a like a mate as well. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? It wasn't like that thing, like, oh, jeez, I'm afraid. It was none of that. So you could be very open and honest, or at least I could be open and honest. He'd be, <laughs> he'd be more old school, like he'd be more like you know, put the head down and get on with it, like you know, I can avoid. Was what was the most horrific part of the whole experience of losing your mom? Uh... That's a damn good question. What did you find the most difficult? Sort of just, I would say, 
what would I say? Your head, getting your head right, watching your own head. You can mind your own head, you, everything else, look after yourself. But I would say it kind of puts you out of sync a bit. And you kind of start blaming things then. Hey, you don't know what you're at. Grief, Afterwards grief. or in the middle? Both. Both. But maybe at the time. Do you know what I found? At the time, you're so busy. Hmm. You're so busy, hey. You're flat out. It's just one thing after another. But then when the dust settles, and it's over with. That's the hard bit. I think the afterwards is harder than the, the event. All the firsts. All the firsts. All the first things. Yeah, and you know, as well, at the time, you can imagine, everybody's landing, everybody's saying their goodbyes and saying, mm. and that happened, that that was going on a good while, like. So, I mean, you hadn't time to bless yourself, like. But then after, then, like, geez, I mean, that night, the night we, the day we were there, and that night, that was tight. That was tough. What'd you do? Did you go out? No, 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 no. Just Jesus, went back to no, the house? Jesus, no. Jesus, no. I did not. I was, I was going to go to the bar, but I was like, Jesus, I better not go to the bar. Like, you know, and that's another thing I would say, if you're in bother, stick to that there. Stick to the coffee. Tell you're right. Yeah. I'll tell you, I think you're middling right. You're never really right. You never, when you're supposed to know when you're right, like, but that night, no, myself and dad stayed home, but I mean, that first night was, was tough. Just very, very tough, like, because it's just so quiet. Because you know the wakes we do, we do wakes very hard in Donegal, mm. very, very hard. Like Jesus, I'll never forget the wake. The the rain was coming in sideways. It was <laughs> absolutely brutal rain. It was horrendous. The worst day ever that night, and one night in particular, and when there was ones waiting to get out of the house, say right? <laughs> the rain was just meeting them sideways, like it was brutal, but. And mobbed, and mo- oh, mobbed, mobbed, and I was kind of think, half thinking, "Jeez, thank God, it's lashing rain," because I couldn't keep going much longer. Like, cause it was yeah. shaking hands now. But uh, I, from that extreme to the next, from the busyness, and that's the idea of a hard week, is to just get you through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the idea of them. You don't the have way. time to think. Don't have time to think. That's the old school way of going on. You don't have time to think about it. But then, after it then, yeah, there's so much time. You know, and then uh, took a it took a couple of weeks off work too. Um, obviously just to get the head right. And but I think if I was looking back on it now, I think if I was doing it again, I think I would I would just go flat out and and work again, like because what, what do you work? What were you working at? I was in social care. Social care. Mm, I was working in social care. I. Um, there was a stage where I was doing like two twenty four hour shifts, and Sligo it was. Driving down the road and to Mammy, like, and then spending the five days, or whatever it was, then going up there and doing another couple of 24 hours or 22 to hours. To be at home as much as you could. Aye, but the, but the break was good too, like, like don't get me wrong, so, like, I, for anybody, social care worker or social, so, in that field, you talk about empathy that I have for the people who do that job. It's a, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I, I definitely took that home with me, that game. It's a tough game to be in, and they don't. And I'm just going to say it out flat out right now: they definitely, definitely don't get paid enough. Hundred percent, they don't do not There's get paid enough. An awful I'm lot of people out there that don't get paid enough mm-hmm. at this time yeah. in certain jobs, and some people are getting way. Yeah, but I mean, you, you know, you can eulogize about doctors, hey, and you can you can talk away about nurses, and Jesus Christ, hundred percent. But the social care workers, and I'm just saying, I'm not in that game anymore. I'm not, I don't think I'll go back to it because it, for me, it, it just I would not built for it. It's a calling. I swear down, it's a calling. After coming, like now look, looking back on it, like how I'm long, so glad. How long I were you in it? A couple of year, couple of year, maybe three, two or three year. Um, it was a great experience, great experience, and uh, get on so got on so well with the people that I worked with, uh, serve between service users and staff. Like I have friends, I have friends from that that are, like, and they they knew how to handle me too for, with the grief, like. Hmm. It was gas, like my friends from home. Wouldn't know what to say to you, like, mm. do you know, they wouldn't know what to say to you, you know, men, like. But well, they don't know unless you've been through it, it's hard knowing what aye, to say. Ah, exactly. But the kind of boys I have at home, they'll be away abroad, and they all landed back on the phone. That's the kind of mates I have. That's cool. You know what I mean? And I wasn't expecting that, I got such a gunk when I seen them landing on the door, I'll never forget it. And, um, are they the same friends that you've had since you were in primary school or did you meet them in secondary, secondary school? Secondary and primary, yeah. Kind of, but more along the lines of uh, football, kind of. Where did you go to pr- secondary school? 
I went over the the comprehensive over the road. Did you like school? No, oh, no, oh, jeez, waste of time, man. In what respect? <laughs> did you just waste find it time. difficult, or was it the people, or did you not like to be led, or what was the problem? Do you think, looking back? I think I was a wee bit. It was me. It was the problem. Like I had no interest at all. No interest whatsoever in school. Like didn't seem to have an interest in it. Just like I just sort of just used to zone out. Then you know. Were you a ball boy? No, no. Just quite. No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, gee, I wasn't. I wasn't bold at all. Hey, I was actually petrified to get in trouble. <laughs> really? I was petrified. Hey, I was so feared. I was so feared of uh I might have been so fair just to get that's all I wanted to do is just get in and not get into any bother and get home. Just keep your head down. Keep the head down, huh? Keep the head down. Like no one just really. Um it just didn't appeal to me. Um And did you finish it out? Oh did I? Mm, how finish did, it out. How I? did you do? Not great, no. What did you do straight after? Or did you know? I hadn't even? a clue. I hadn't a clue, hey. Huh? So you passed your leaving, you finish off for the summer. Yeah. You have your leaving done. Yeah, and what are you going? What are you thinking? Are uh, you... I could try different things, but I suppose like I knew I had to do something. Like, cause I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. What were your How parents you telling to you? Know? Well, my mother ate the head when she got the results. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she not I know. Mean, I mean, ate the head. I mean, like, um, oh, she knew well. She, she reminds. She said to me a couple of times. She says, she, she often said after, like, to people that would come into the house. She's like, when he, when I say that Michael didn't open a book, I mean, she was telling the truth, I did not open a book, hey. And I wouldn't mind, the bag was the on size, hey, and you'd need to be over like a turtle, <laughs> walking through the fucking, walking through the the school, hey, you there like a turtle with the big weight on your bag, and you not looking at one book inside <laughs> <them>. <laughs> Do you know? You didn't care. I didn't give up, didn't, didn't, just didn't care, hey. And, but I was stupid too, like, I think, honest to God, Developmentally, I think it was a wee bit behind. <laughs> did you start liking music back then, or when did you first start wanting to play an instrument, or how did that? She's, you're going to think I'm a real Daniel here talking away about my mother. <laughs> Shout out Daniel Don, love you, love you. Um, like my mother made me, made me, literally, L- literally made me go. Well, so the Tuesday night is up to Paddy Ward. Shout out Paddy, looks after music guitars. Uh, in Donegal Town and w- went up there one day and he says you should try like it's the piano or keyboards I think it was the keyboards what age are you at this time? I'm only in primary I think still uh, I think I'm in primary I. Uh. but again just my attention span was horrendously bad it's nearly like you see Wayans now and they're on TikTok and they're they're just like Any a more fish than two seconds three <laughs> seconds <laughs> I'm, I'm out yeah that was me like for sure but then like she made me like when I say we had, bo- I she had ball to get me to go. I mean we had rows. But I think she just wanted to go up so she could go shopping and <laughs> uh, to go town. To be honest, but anyway, uh, I went up anyway and done it. And the, the teacher, she was as good. Jesus, can't mind her name. She was as good to me. She had wild patience. What happened then? Oh, I, I started the guitar then. Um, there used to be about. Do, uh. John Hina used to do uh, uh, guitar lessons in, in Doherty's bar years ago. There was 30, <laughs> there used to be 30 of us in there, battering guitar, like, he'd be there playing country tunes and we'd be following along. And that's where I learned the basics, was, uh, was uh, Hina, and she's the crack, and sure, everybody would be there turning the fucking, turning the neck of the guitar, putting everybody else oh, out of tune. So it sounded her <laughs> <in there. laughs> You know, and uh, Orla then, Orla was great as well, Orla was just other and she was a great teacher as well. Um, I got the basics there, and then I kind of just motored on myself. And at that time, were you just happy to be able to play a song that you hear on the radio, or uh, are you going? I think I can write my own song. <laughs> or does that come way later? Does that only happen mm. when you gather emotional baggage? <laughs> I think I know. To be honest with you, as long as I can remember, I've always been like. If I listened to a song on the radio and there was an ending of a, of a note or whatever, I'd always be like, even when I was small, I'd always be like, Jesus, I wouldn't have done it like that. Or, oh, well, Jesus, that was good. 
I would always have had that, you know. Breaking down the actual notes and the tunes or uh, yeah. uh, breaking down how it's delivered or like and geez, I'm not saying Christ, I'm not saying oh I, everything I do is class. I'm, but not it's just that, the way but I'm just saying it's the way my brain was wired. I would always be like, Geez, I don't think I would have done it like that. I think if you to do that there it would have been or I think if you to do that it would have been a wee bit better. Do you know, I've always have had that kind of an opinion, yeah. but I would never have said it out like So were you in your bedroom at night instead of on your books, on your guitar? No. Playing I was outside kicking football, like do you know what I mean? I was mm. outside kicking ball or as I say, there was a good gang was on it, like uh football was the main one, like football was the main one. We were absolute psychopaths about football, like when I was younger. Did you play with county? No. Ah, for fuck's no, sake. No, why no. not? <laughs> exactly. Why didn't you? Uh I'd you know why, hey, I'd say uh there was a there's a, a bit of a legend by the name of Jim McGinnis, hey, and he didn't like look I'm way best. <laughs> I'm way best. I didn't get on with Jim. <laughs> did you know him? No, I did not, did not. I'm way talking shit. No, no, did not. No, I wouldn't have been I would have been a good average, but not nowhere near the standard, like nowhere near it. Um then you just kinda of fall out of it, don't you? So you didn't know what you were going to do. You're at home. You're after trying how many different jobs? What jobs did you try? <laughs> I'm not going to say on this when I try a day. I'm not going to No, go, you didn't prostitute yourself <laughs> out now. Come on now. It's hardly no, that bad. No. No, look at it. I tried different things. I tried a few different things, but... Like, I played... I played... Don't get me wrong. I played I played local gigs at the weekends, you know. With bands? No, or mis- yourself? myself. Oh, my tail. Jesus. You know, I often wonder like about sing- singers. When's the first time that you go, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sing in front of a few people. I was made. Yes, I am. Who made you? Were you made? Yeah. That's yeah. what made, that's what yeah. it is, you see. And you have to be, I think you have to be made. Yeah, well, maybe not now. The, new, the younger ones coming out don't give a damn, but being yeah. in front of ones, don't they know? No, yeah. But I mind, I mind being petrified. <laughs> Absolutely petrified, like... I can't mind now where it was, but I was. I know I was made. Mom made me again. Mom, Dad made me in a public place. Yeah, yeah. get up there. <laughs> get, get up there, uh, Mike, with your guitar and sing. A and song. don't get me wrong. The couple, first lot of times, I made a dick of myself. Like a hundred percent, no doubt about it. Made a complete. Dick. What complete. was the first song you sang in front of someone? Oh, that was going to kill me. It was a. It was an. Uh, Jesus, good at getting stuff out of you. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, right, so there's this. <laughs> we we went up for Christmas. We used to go up to Sligo, the mom's relations, right? Mm. And uh, it just uh, up to the Brady's there. And uh, they'd be good enough singers. A couple of them would be good singers, right? And uh, next thing, uh, Michael sing. But Daddy hasn't, and I say, hasn't a note in his head. <laughs> I mean, it's it's tight, like, <laughs> but he enjoys it, like. Right. There's a song. Do you ever do you ever, do you ever hear the Wild Colonial Boy? No, what's that? <laughs> oh, there was a Wild Colonial Boy, right? Anyway, it's now it's now it's tune as old as the Hulls, right? But I sang it the way that he sang it to me, <laughs> <laughs> and it was all wrong because he sang it wrong. It was the exact same as he sang it, <laughs> and. It, and you talk about reaction. It couldn't be bet back into key. <laughs> no, it couldn't be bet into key uh, for sure. That's the main. I think that was around that. I think. So you were there singing a new time. I'm doing this pitch perfect. I thought I was a hundred <laughs> fucking nailing it. And I was like, "Is this the reaction you're supposed to get?" Well, at least they're, if they're laughing, they're not crying. <laughs> but hey, no, that's funny. Yeah, no, that was the first one. Hey, and, and, uh, I mean the first gig I had was in the hills. It's the hills of the time, Mary Campbell. I think had it. I think that was the first one. It was around around that anyway? I just got off the got up, you know, got up and running, and like you're playing predominantly kind of your Irish tunes, you know, your folky tunes. You're you're pleasing the crowd that's there, like. But it, great learning curve because it in bars like that, and there'll be times as well you'd be playing to nobody, like there'll be four or five, maybe four boys thinking at the bar. I don't give a damn what you're at, but that you have to go, you have to do them, you have to do them once. And get used to them. Hmm. Like they're the hard ones. Like mm-hmm. you, you know yourself. Like they're yeah. they're the hard ones. They're the ones that you earn your money. Like you fucking earn it because they're not one, and you still have to do your best for the people that's there. You know that last the way I my head would be. Whoever's in it, you do your best for who's there, and don't be thinking about it. So when you're, so what you're saying is you're building yourself to not worry about what the crowd is doing. 
and concentrate well, on giving ha- well, the just, best gig uh, or yeah, constantly having to read the crowd and see what they want. How both, do you how both. do you how do you balance that? Well, I mean, if there's four bucks at the bar drinking, there's no point in trying to play them because they don't give a damn. Yeah. More, most of them, most of them don't give a damn. Maybe one or two if they're a bit lively. Well, but if there's a crowd in it, then and I always say you're like a ref, you try and please everybody. Well, that's an act in that you know in the pub game. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to please everybody. Now you'll have your tunes that go down everywhere. You could play them anywhere, and they're just going to. You just know they're set. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're set. They're, you're you're going to get a reaction, but then. You might go a wee bit left and see is there one or two tapping and then you go a wee bit right and see right. And this is the way this is the way they want it. This is the way I'm gonna go down. Simple as that, like. Hmm. You know. But you'll probably know yourself as well. I found the years I gigged, there's some places that would book music that just shouldn't have fucking music. The people that are in there or the tone of the place is just not built for music. Like yeah. nobody wants to hear it. Would you know that yeah. when you're setting up? Oh yeah. Yeah. You kinda you, So you're there. Oh, oh, you'd be yeah. setting up yeah. and you'd see everybody looking around kinda going, Oh for fuck's sake, music yeah. or whatever or kinda or even what you were saying about playing alone. I played to a barman and only the barman and oh, I'm not right, making geez, this up right. for yeah. two hours one night. And I was like, look, lad, do you want to reschedule? It was a it was a picnic weekend. It was a Friday of a picnic and I was booked in for a gig. Mm. And I was like, nobody came in. I left it an extra like half hour setting up or whatever. Nobody came in. Uh, you give it a chance, like and yeah, you do that yeah. too. Uh. But your luck. Fuck. <laughs> I'd yeah. die. Would you? I wouldn't. I don't think I'd like it. No, I, I, I've well. never experienced that like that. Yeah. If I go to work and no one's there, I'm happy out. This is my <laughs> dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you would know bits about it because I mean you're so dependent. On people consuming your content, but it's it's blind. I yeah post and ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I post yeah. and I disappear. I don't. I don't look. It's different when you're physically there and you're yeah, yeah, putting yeah, in yeah, yeah. effort on something that you've built a skill over. Yeah. Yeah. I, I. If I was, I'd feel like I'd be kind of offended. You'd be offended by what? Well, if I was an artist and you produce something and you put it out there and no one watches, you'd be a night. Jesus, I wouldn't be the one, but no, I'd hey. That's not, wouldn't be my head space at all. No, right now I'm talking to you, no. Yeah. But maybe if you're a wee bit, maybe if at, at the start, like if you're a bit worried, you're just worried, you're worried about what people will think. <laughs> but I don't have that now at all, I couldn't give up. And you're but getting paid at the end shit. of the day as well. So that kind huh? of, you're getting paid at the end of the day as well. So oh, if you want to play to a well, wall, play to a fucking wall and take your money at yeah. the end of it. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I 100%, like, especially that, like, you're not really worried I don't really, you're there to play a gig, mm. if, if it goes down, you'll be looked after, do you know what I mean? And when you were working, say you started working whatever few jobs you were doing, <laughs> when did you decide, I'm going to go full time at music, I want, to, I, w- I want this to be my full time job, and mm. when you had figured out that you wanted to have that as your full time job, mm. were you writing music? At this stage, or did that come well, I, well, the reason I started the music was I told mother, my mother that I was going to do it. Do you only do that after your mother passed away? I was doing it. Do, was when like, she was sick? Well, she always said it. Like I, like, I always knew I was going to do it. I always knew it myself. I was going to do it. I always knew I, always knew I was going to ch- try it anyway. I hmm. had to try it. I had, just had to. Had to see, could I? And I said it to her. We had a conversation, like, and... <clears throat> And then around that conversation, I said to her, look, it's, don't be worried about me. I said, I'm going to try this music thing, I says, and I'm going to make a go of it. Hey? And if that doesn't work, I'm going to do something else. I said, but I said, one thing for sure, the next time I'm talking to you, I'll have something to show for it, man. And she says, sure, I know you will. That's cool. That's not a good way to come on it. Wasn't she cute? Like, yeah. she, you know what I mean? She didn't, she wasn't like to me, oh, she's, I'll be worried about you. No, no, she's like, Sure, know you will. <laughs> Haven't they the greatest way ever come yeah. around you? Yeah. Haven't they? They're as cute to the way they come around you. Like, and like that is exactly what I needed to hear that time. Like, so had you wrote a song yet? I had. I wrote a couple. How was that like? How did you. What was the first song you wrote? Oh, jeez, I have loads of them. Hey, but like, I tell you this, I'm my head's like a self. Um. The first one, the first real one, concrete one, was what you want to know. Like, that's the first one that I had everything right. Did you know that when you wrote that and you'd finished it, did you go, I know this is, this is going to hit? I knew it was good, but I didn't think it was going to do what it done. I knew it was a good song, like. 
I knew it was a good song. Like, even though I played it in the house, when I was playing it at the start, like, I was like, this is good. Because I just got 100% through. And it's a wee bit catchy. I knew that. How like, long did you take? How long did it take to write that? Half hour. Fuck off. I swear to God, half hour. <laughs> did it start with the melody or the lyrics? The whole lot came in half hour. What What happened? Did you, how did it come? I'm not, that's not me waffling here. Yeah. It was after a night out, like, came back to the house and was pissed off about something and just next thing the whole fucking thing came out. And that's the only time that's ever happened, like, to me. Like, sometimes it would happen. Sometimes, like, I'm writing one out at the minute. Um, I had the first album done, right, but I'm kind of working on the second one now. And I'm doing, <clears throat> i done a song there. We're actually going to record it on Friday. So just as an example, like, that came fucking quick too. Like, like I'm doing a... A version of the course that came super super fast, but nothing came as fast as that as um like nothing came to the head as quick and the melody and the everything just fell just perfect like just a hundred percent. You know, even Aussie man, Aussie man was was a wee bit like that, but at not in the same level. Like I've never had it. It was just like do you ever just have do you ever just be mm. in that zone? Mm. Do you ever just be in that zone, hey? And everything's just flying and you can't stop it. But I wasn't afraid that it was gonna stop either. So I could take, I was like I was in slow motion. I was taking my time with it. And everything seemed to rhyme. And everything the level seemed to go right. Hmm. Just one of them fucking things like. Yeah. Did you get a phone call after you released Aussie Man from whatever friend that was? I got plenty of phone calls. Did you? Are you uh, talking about me? I fucking give you back that uh, Henry, you can't you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to tell you this. I, I scum, tell you this about that. And it's more of a generic thing. Like, do you know, hmm. I wasn't thinking about one man. Because it's so many. But sure, I put it out. I put it out in, in uh, an Ardra then. Uh, like once was asking me who's about. And I says, ah, oh, I can't be telling you that. <laughs> and sure, everybody then was chatting. Uh, who is it? Who was it? Sure, that was as good as anything, like to get it out. Yeah. I'm not telling you who it was. Sure, there's nobody. Everyone knows guy, that guy, don't yeah. they? Ah. Everyone knows that guy. Like one fella was, was, uh, was, was everybody said it was, it was this book, uh, 90. You know who you are. Everybody said it was ninety, and uh, I, I was, I said nothing, like, and he was loving it, like, <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, 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 that's about me, like, whatever. But this wasn't about anybody. Like. Why is he called ninety? I don't know, to be honest. Don't her, there's her. a wild, a wild place for nicknames up with us. Like. Oh Jesus, uh, Donegal! I have a nephew that lives in Donegal and Lifford, uh, and he comes out with rare ones, like they have uh, rare ones, like what? Oh, what was the nickname of someone? Mortgages. <laughs> one's no, one's that's thick. That's just thick. <laughs> one's fixed and one's variable. <laughs> one I looking at you, one I looking for you. Yeah. He was crying one day and I the tears were rolling down his back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it they, there is some great sayings up there. Mayo's the same. Mayo's mm. very like that. Well, well if you if you think about what you want to know, it's all sayings. Yeah. It's all sayings. Mm. Like it's fun, like it's the wildest place for sayings, and I love them. Like mm. I think them sayings are class. Like that, but again, that's the humor. Yeah, like there's a lot of sayings that I would be feared to say now. Oh, yeah. you, <laughs> would. you know, yeah, you wouldn't just get away. No, no, not now. No, I seen and a wild change when I came down that loan to college actually, and I the difference. Like what? That long as well. Did you go that loan? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, T, lads. <laughs> the Willow and all that crack. Was it I? TSU now or something? Ah, something. Yeah. So you went to college. I imagine. I well, you couldn't have done. You couldn't have done. Yeah, but you couldn't have done that bad in. The I did. Event. I did. I did. I did. I did. Believe me, I did. So, what did you do in college? Well, I see. I did a. I did a. I did a PLC first. You say because me leaving was absolutely horrendous, and it wasn't down to the teachers, down to me. And then I went and done a. I done a course in Sligo. Um, what was the course in? Social care. Because I figured at the time, right? I don't know what I'm going to do. But if you're helping people and you're getting paid for it, sure, Jesus, it's not a great way to make a living. That's what mm. I, I looked at at the time. Like, and then I went down to that loan because I didn't want to go to Sligo because I knew if I went to Sligo... Full of dickheads. Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, Jesus, no, not that. But not not like that, no. But it's more like... It's more like... I, I knew all my mates was going to Sligo, like... I was like, if I go to Sligo, there's no way I'm st staying... I'm no way I'll finish this. Like, not doing this. Excuse me. Not a chance. Not a chance. So oh, it's raining. Oh, I'm not going in the day. <laughs> so you, 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 you were deliberately staying away from your friends because you wanted to focus on what you were doing. 
I wouldn't say deliberately, but I'll just say I was kind of smart enough to know that if I stayed, if I... Because you see, I was in Slag with that year to do the PLC. And, uh... Do you know yourself, like, fucking first year, like, you know yourself, like, just pure fucking mayhem, like. That was, as, as, again, Tommy said, it was, it was warmer outside than it was inside. And that. <laughs> when I say that the, it was as cool, it was like Antarctic in that bedroom, hey. The nose used, used to be blue in me in the morning. It was that bad. How cold it was, like. So what are you going to do? I sure will head over to the brewery for a lock of paint, those, hey. I'm on over a lock of paints here now. It'll make warm us up for the evening, like. Not a fire going, no oil, nothing. It was real. Horrific. Real horrific. Anything like. other than be at home. Anything other than be in that house, say. Hey. Yeah. The, the coolest houses I was ever in. But anyway, uh, I, look, at I knew after that year, it's like, if I do, if I, if I, if I go to Sligo here now, there's no way I'm passing. So I was like, right, what's the next job? And I said, I don't know why. I actually don't know why. It's just literally, you know what I mean? It was random. Mm-hmm. So I went to, went to Athlone then and, and I fell in with her. By the way, if you're not the brightest, make friends with people that are smart. <laughs> make friends with people that are smart in your course and that'll look after you. And it's better if they want something from you so then you can back it. <laughs> That's the way I got through it. And a lot of sound lectures too, don't get me wrong, but... There was a couple of walks there, and uh, and only four of them. Like, do you still hang with them? Um, she has a good while to go now. Are we myself and that uh, one of, one of the boys, Dara. We went out to Canada for a while. How long were we out there? Got to a year. Got to a year. I went out to run it for college. Like, went to do the the third. Um, yeah, you used to have to do like uh, shadow ones and and social care. Yeah, so I came up to do. Something out in Canada, as in Edmonton and Alberta, actually. Jesus, so that's that. that's a long way up. <sighs> to, uh, Fuck. Well, it's the Midwest, like it's like Texas is here and Alberta is just a mm. moment. Like. Well, there might be people somewhere, there, whatever. But anyway, uh, so done that with him. So be, like it was close enough at the time, but sure, you know yourself, life gets in the way, and like I'm on a different route now, completely, completely different. Like, but you're happier now. Um. I would say I'm more content now. That's a good Definitely answer. say more content. <laughs> That's a good answer. You know, you can be happy and you can be sad and you can be, you know, but I would say more content now. I'd say I'm as content now as ever was. Um, When you released the first song and it became popular, uh huh. did it, was it an overnight change? No, everything. Not at all. Same thing. I love an art drama. I know, but would you not have <laughs> loads of people wanting to book you for every gig and festival or do you know little things like that um i got wild support from donegal first obviously like and then tyrone was quite good to me um kind of all sporadically then around the place without a doubt the best people to me was up it was in the show you know that to the top of me mm. without a doubt um the, the my my kind of um, the people that would follow my tunes are kind of predominantly based. I would say in Donegal, they're definitely based up around there. Um, I don't get me wrong, you, you get f- a few down where I am too, but Danny Sean ones really look after me at the start. You know when you weren't when like uh, this was always I was winging it, man. Honest to God, what you talk about winging it? Like I was just like, right, I'm going to do it, but I hadn't a clue. Had you a manager? I had. I, well, I had in that time. I had in that time. I met a boy, um, and he looks after me now. Fergal, Fergal Cairn is his name, and he looks after me now. Um, but at the time, I would have been. I'll tell you, the the the, the your mindset changes so much from when you're working on a job where you're getting a salary. When you're working for yourself, it's unbelievable how my head has changed. Like I got absolutely rude at the start because I hadn't a clue. Boys was taking the complete hand, and then like I wasn't on the wiser. But you don't belong learning, you know. You don't belong learning. But the, the, I found. When did you figure out oh, I need a manager? This is a fucking. I'm getting fucked over here. Uh I need someone to be the bad guy. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's just it. That's what is best, basically. What it is like, really and truly, because I find that, that I find that that uh, 
it compromises the relationship between me and the, and the person that has the venue. If I'm mm. bartering, you don't get on. You don't get on as much then because you're, you're crabbing and crying. At least if you're some man there looking after it, you're just landing to do. The you're job. just land, and you you can be yourself. Like, but if there's any, like I wear my heart in my sleeve, I can't pretend to. You. Mm. I can't pretend. Do you know if I'm not happy, I'm not happy. Like, and I'm not going to pretend I am. Hmm. And if I am happy, I am. That's just the way I am. Like, so Fergal kind of cuts through all that there for me. Um, and don't get me wrong, Jesus, there, there's rakes of, of good pu- uh, publicans and good uh, venue owners, but there's still an odd one, and that's where he'd be better sorting them out than me because I just, I just can't, I just can't deal with that crack at all. <laughs> Do you know? Did you get much playing radio? Uh Highland very good to me. A uh, few other stations, but say now, um, it's just notoriously difficult to get on the, like the massive broadcasters because maybe you're not as like I'm not trying to be commercial. I'm mm. not trying to be. How do you say it? How Has you anyone say it? tried culture? to sign you? Mainstream. Has anyone ever tried to sign you or give you advice on? Oh, you know, if you did this, that, the other, you'd be more mainstream, and we could maybe make you more commercially viable and. Well, I've seen too much. I've had a couple of offers. I eh? had a couple of offers, like. And when they sit with you, you don't have to give names, right? But no. when you sit with these people, mm-hmm. because I mean, Matt talk about yeah, this. I was, now, I, was gr- I was green now, and that's happened. Before, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> they want to own you. Want to suck well. the life out of you and own you. <laughs> like, and not suck your dick. You let them do that. They want to suck the life out of you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? No, listen, it's kind of like the way it was, the way these things work. Like there's another, there's a couple of boys that I know for sure this has happened to, for sure this has happened to, where they've had one or two, they've gone meddling well, and somebody's come in and offered them big gigs. Hmm. But I'm as well off doing what I'm at now. As they are doing the massive gig. Mm. You know what I'm on about, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye. So I'm was well off now. But the only but the difference is is that I can say whatever I want. Yeah. And write, this is the difference. And write whatever you want. And write whatever I want. This is the difference. And this that is what I was not willing to compromise. Because what am I what am I if I'm not fit to say whatever I want? And I'm not I'm not saying I'm right all the time. I'm not saying that. Mm. But I'm saying that I'm going to say whatever I feel at that moment in time because art doesn't have to be correct all the time. Mm. You know? Mm. It's just how you're feeling at that moment in time. You know what I mean? And I, that that is like worth maybe 90, 95% of what I do. As I'm going to say, I'm going to, uh, most of my stuff is based on, all of my stuff is based on things that I see in front of me. Most of it. Mm. Like, look at anybody can write a tune about love or about fucking, Jesus Christ, it's been done to death, like, but it's not everybody that can take an issue and put something to it and make it catchy. It's not everybody can do it. And I'm not saying I'm great. And there's plenty of boys at it, but they them boys don't wouldn't get the same as say somebody who's out, out there and he's about twenty different colours on him, he's fucking rings all over him, tattoos net head to toe, and he's like a I'd say too much, like he's not straight laced, maybe he's he's more kinda out there. Like you have to be out there. And like that's that's what's popular at the moment, but there's no point in trying to go with trends. You to be yourself, and if, if these trends come to you, that's that's fine. But I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be as a as a musician. There's no way I'm going to be sucking up to anybody or trying to fit into somebody else's perception of what I should be. I'm going to be myself. No, I agree with you. And do you understand what I mean? Like? I, I do, and uh, that's why Shane showed me your music. Uh, yeah, and a couple of things bothered me about it. Right, the first was <laughs> I never heard of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that I heard your song, so yeah. I heard your first song, yeah. But I hadn't heard, and then I listened to your songs, and I was wanting Snowflake, like, and <laughs> and and I'm just there thinking, because I I really believe one of the most important things that we have as individuals, as sovereign individuals, uh. is our free speech. I think oh, 100%. The, I think the Americans have that right, and people can say they're mad bastards and they're whatever they are, but free speech is all you have. Because you have no more, the only power we really have, again, oppressors, is our free speech. And once yeah. once that gets eroded away and it's gone. It sure it's, it is gone. It's yeah. just it, gone. It's more or less gone. It's sure. more or less gone. It's more of a freedom of speech as long as it agrees with the popular opinion. 
it's, it's, well, a friend it's, of mine put it well and he says, you have rights until they don't want you to have them. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have, a, I always, you don't have any rights, say. This is one Look of at all the rights that you had over the thing last lock of year. But then you had none of them. So that's all waffle. Yeah, it is. That's isn't, isn't it not? Yeah, it's yeah. Waffle. waffle. You have, have rights, I have a right and you have a right, but then of the whole thing is saying something else. You don't have, so I don't have that right anymore. I had it two weeks ago. Mm. You don't have any. No, it's crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like. Cra- and one of the lines in your song that just, it, it caught, I wrote it down. Right, because uh, I love it, and I want everyone to listen to it. Believe me, it takes a lot to get Dave to write something. Now. And <laughs> this is how the song "Snowflakes" free cool. speech on its knees. So long, diversity. If I sugarcoat what I wrote, you might not know the original. Free speech on its knees. So long, diversity. If I sugarcoat what I wrote, you might never know the original. Thinking critical, separating fictional. Freedom stays afloat, but snowflakes are right of control. When I say what's on my head, if we don't agree, don't hold it against me. The facts don't care about your feelings. And like that is so true. Yeah, this is that like. Like it's so if like if you don't have free speech, so if I if you say something fucking crazy, right? So we could, let, we, we could get soundbited in this podcast now, like yeah, yeah. Let, and it could come out something. Man. Exactly, yeah. But if you say something batshit crazy, I don't agree with. It. It's fucking mental. I love to kill puppies with hammers, right? <laughs> you shouldn't kill puppies with hammers, yeah, yeah. but at least I know oh. not to give my kittens to them or my puppies. Oh. Because then I know where I stand with him. See, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Better yeah, yeah, than the devil you don't. But now what everyone says is what they think you want me to hear. So everyone... Oh, that's just what I'm... That, 100%. Yeah. So I'm going to converse with you and say the things that I think you want me to hear. Mm. You're going to converse with me mm. and say the things that I think I want you to hear. Mm. And then nobody says anything. Mm. Everything is just diluted and lies and untrue, and nobody knows where we're going, and eventually we're all lost. Mm. It's but depressing. Sure. Most conversations even now are just people waiting for you to finish what you're saying so that they can say what yeah. they had in their head, and they've, they've been thinking about what's going on in their head for the last five minutes and not listening to a word you said. I had a boss like that once. <laughs> yeah. Fair nine. So it's like chatting up a woman, eh? <laughs> 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 I know. It, it is true though. Example one. Yeah. <laughs> like it's amazing that we now, for the first time ever in history, we live in a time where intelligent people are being silenced so mm. stupid people don't get offended. Mm, but that's it, uh, well like you often find too, you know the stupidest ones is noisy, like. Yeah. Mm. But let them at it. They have a right to go, but don't be say, don't be don't be saying then that the the boy with unpopular opinion hasn't got time to say what he is everybody should be fit to say what they want like it's the shutting down of people yeah that's the that's what i think people like me or you have a problem with i want to hear what everyone says oh, oh, and uh, whether it's let shit. me make my own mind up like yeah, yeah. I, i'll make my own mind up mm. do you know you don't have to lead me it's like andrew tape being cancelled like he's i was Fourth. wondering was that man gonna get a mention <laughs> like it, Listen, but, say what you want about andrew at but, least he's at least he's having the crack he's, like. just, he's been himself a lot of the time he's seriously been tongue-in-cheek oh, he says yes, he he says shit. he exercises while he's asleep right he says a lot of mad shit yeah. but the fact that they pulled him off everything just says so much so so actually, i meant, I meant to ask you about that recently because you i've never listened to anything he said never heard that and just i flick past the tiktoks was just never interested or whatever and then i started seeing that i was like all right seeing a headline the other day i was like youtube have now decided to also cancel under the along with the rest of the social media platforms i was like the fuck was he saying like, he wasn't look he mm. was saying some mad stuff but not <laughs> okay. not worth getting canceled like if you're not sure, promoting violence or fucking whatever then well, sure it's bad it's bad in the taliban's on twitter <laughs> yeah and he's off it it's mad it's you mad. know yeah how long am i not here yeah it's yeah. crazy it is crazy. Yeah. And you know, but the thing about it is, the thing about all that they are cancelling shit is, well, me and you could have a problem now, right? And we could make a movement about it. And next thing, there's wild traction. But there's only so long that you can keep that going without the, with, before the machine takes the, mm. the goodness out of it, right? And I give you an example of that, right? 
my upper eye, upper eye come from, right, in Donegal, but it's, it's around the country, there's this thing called mica, hmm. right, and it's this thing that defects the blocks and houses, um, it's it's happened up it's happened up in the initial area predominantly, but it's in Roscommon and Sligo, as far as I know, it's, it's all around the place. These the, the the families are under this for ten year. This is going on ten year now. And you can imagine the house falling around you. And the house is literally the house, falling down. The, there's houses that are falling, and but the houses that's there now are gonna fall. Right, so they're paying mortgage. You can imagine paying a mortgage of a of a two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand worth of a mortgage. Right, you can imagine paying that off to the bank. You know and fine well that's going to fall. That's what's going on. They had a movement there, and it had a wild bit of traction. Maybe a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago, right? Uh, Paddy Dever and a few a few other people up that way, trying to get some kind of a movement to get, to, get, to get the government to sort it out. This is 10 year. This is going on, right? They ran out of steam. Who happens. Did? Who did? Happens. Happens. The, the, the people. people. The people. The people. Jeez, you the can't move. be protesting night, noon, and morning. Like. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But the government have time. They have time. The families don't have time. So did anything get done about it? No, it's been done, hi. Nothing's been done, and I seen this, and I thought to myself, like I had this, I had a song wrote about it when when it was going well. When, but I was thinking, there's no point in me putting it out now when it's going well, because if I put this out now and it's going well, it'll just go it and it'll. Ah. So I put out a song called "It's a Great Wee Country." Sarcasm, obviously, saying all about that, saying about it. Excuse me, a couple of different things, right? Because I'm just, I thought to myself. I have to, to, to and thanks so many for having me um, on the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. I have to see, can I bring this, or can can I help bring this into the mainstream again? Because I am trying to put myself in that, in that situation. If I'm paying 200000 or whatever the fuck it is to have a house, to know that it's going to be be tossed or be down around you. And these ones have to, and all the, they're looking to be reimbur- reimbursed for the for the block, right? Now, I, I'm, I'm speaking just as a, like, I, I don't have any... I'm not like I'm my my house hasn't done nothing right. I'm just speaking because I I do care, right? Mm. And I don't think there's enough of that going on. There's a wild culture in this country at the minute of sure it's nothing to do with me. Mm. Sure it's nothing to do with me, and that's the heart of the problem. That's why they're getting away with as much as they're getting away with. And who is getting away with? Is it the government or? It, well, it's it Cassidy's be. Blocks is what the name of the books that was selling the, the, the blocks, right? It was Cassidy's. It's Cassidy's Blocks. I don't know what they are now. How many families are affected by this? I, listen, I couldn't tell you numbers. I'm not going to tell you figures because I don't know. But all I it's know... It's substantial enough. It's, though, it's well, hundreds anyway. Hundreds anyway. Like what, what bothers me about it is I, I think you about... You think about the contractor selling blocks. Yeah. How many blocks would he send to, to different houses at a time? That's the way you have to be thinking. Think mm. like that. So how many houses do you think? Oh, well, sure. Sure, yes. could be. There could be houses that has it that they don't even know that they have it yet. There could be, like. Mm. I just think about the families and their. Even if your blocks are fine and your house is strong, life is tough. <laughs> there you, See, go. you know, life yeah. is tough trying to pay your mortgage, trying to get your kids through school, trying to buy the books, trying to. Like, I'm living life. I know how busy. And uh. imagine having the worry of, Jesus, will my house fall down? And you, no wonder they ran out of steam. It's it's not possible to, you keep going? for yeah. families to do that. Especially what you yeah. said, 10 years going on. 10 that. years, like. And like, <clears throat> you know, it's only ever so often, like, unless you go down to, to Dublin, you're not going to be heard at all. But like, I think there's another, I think there's another, pro- there's another protest happening. Um, I'll, g- I'll give, the, give you the date. You might put it into, into the link, okay? Um, to see, can we, to see, can we su- support these families? Because it has to start somewhere, and I would make an appeal. I would make an appeal to anybody, everybody, to get get your get your ass down to Dublin to support the families. Because it can't just be that small contingent. Because if it's just that small contingent, it's not going to get done. And I'll go further. I would say that because it's ten year, you can imagine how the head would be mm. for a lot of these families. And I wouldn't just be asking for a hundred percent redress. I'd be asking to get compensated for mental health. As well, I'll be asking for far more. 
And what are the local constituents saying? What are the local politicians doing? What what have they said? Do uh, they care? Do they do they care? Yeah. Well, that's been ten years, hasn't it? <laughs> that's what you tell me. The government and they'd pay out for fucking anything. I was thinking, half thinking about am I going to say this on the, on, on, on the air, right? But I'm, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Nobody has any any problem with giving people a place to stay that's coming from a war torn country. Jesus, nobody begrudges anybody that. Right? Hmm. But charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. Look after your own house first. Look at the homeless crack that's happening in Dublin. Look at, the, look at the cost of living. Charity begins at home. And if you don't look after your own people, who's going to look after them for you? Hmm. But that's even just on that point, because I actually don't know enough about this, so it might get my head torn off here or whatever. <laughs> I won't tell you. Is it, it, well, not by you, but by the public. But is it not because legally Ireland, or through EU regulations, Ireland has to take those people in, right? And I'm the same, I don't want to begrudge anybody coming oh, in. No, 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 there is. Oh, yeah. that, that's natural yeah, enough. But that's what I'm saying. So do you, do like, if you can't look after the homeless here, would they even I, look I've, after I've, those I've, people? If, if but how, how is there homeless on the streets? The, the homeless uh, problem is a complicated one. Uh, and a lot of it is mental health issues. Uh, and I've talked to, she's at this stage now, I'd say 20 or 30 really long conversations with people that uh, suffer with mental health issues. Uh, and the help that people have in this country if they have mental issues is zero. That's nice, isn't it? it is so bad. Yeah. I was talking to a couple of guards one night from Port, around Leash and they said that they spend a lot of their evenings sorting out mental issues problems. Mm-hmm. Families that have someone that has a mental issue and they're called because the family don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. They're sent up to a psych nurse mm-hmm. and they're deemed, go on, go home, there's nothing we can do for you. Mm-hmm. And this is happening in every county in Ireland. Families don't have the support. And if you don't have the support, eventually the family can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're so... But you, you're all right. Charity starts at home in every farm. Yeah, but I would say another thing, right? If, if the government really cared about mental health, I think it's very simple. Why isn't it in schools for young fellas in particular? Because there's young fellas out here killing themselves. There's young fellas out here committing suicide. Mm. So I think it should be drove into young fellas in school very early the whole way some kind well, what, of a, what some do, kind what of a do you process drive into you know, cuz i, I struggle i struggle with this a lot what, what are we we're building weak people yeah. from the time they go to school yeah i agree we're building weak yeah so people. resilience is what you're trying to build so mm. you, you you have some kind of a course with a load of doctors or whatever like prevention is better than the cure Build resilience up so that young fellas know. Because all I ever hear, right? All I ever hear is this narrative now. Paddy, Paddy, Paddy the body had it up on on uh, thing. Nobody's talking. Hmm. Nobody's talking. And look, at talking's grand. Talking's grand. But talk's cheap at the same time. Hmm. But you have to you have to talk. I get that. Right? Talking but is grand when the, the problem's there. It's to yeah. stop the problem from starting. Aye, aye, a hundred percent. But I would argue that. I would argue that men. It's different to to woman. Men doesn't like speaking. Like, hmm. do you like speaking? Not really. Aye, I don't like it. Very good at it, though. <laughs> Aye. Well, you're doing enough of it, Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> but I would. I I thought a lot about this because obviously like, everybody has it, right? I think it's too late for like me and you. Hey, it's too late for us. But what I'm saying is, it should be in schools, where every year, uh, resilience is built into children, mm-hmm. so that. When the shit hits the fan, right, they have something. They have some kind of a bl- blueprint where they know what they're at and they're like, right, this is what I do, 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 this is what I do. And whether that is learning how to talk for lads in a way, learning how to say it when something goes wrong. I, I don't know how you'd have it, but all I know is that well, I should be drove into young fellas at school. And That's I what think I would that say. Resilience only comes from failure. Yeah. From suffering. Yeah. From pain and pain management. Yeah. And I mean emotional pain. I'm not saying we go and we stab him with compasses and stuff. <laughs> we'll make a man out of him. We'll make a man out of him. <laughs> it, it, it's this culture of, oh, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, if you put your uh, mind down to it and everyone's a winner and no, we're absolutely not. Even no. I just say, because I think that is, in my opinion, the biggest issue that we have at the moment is the fact that everybody is going around with this mindset of, well, 
bullying shouldn't be a thing and this shouldn't be a thing and it's like I know it shouldn't be but that's a fairy tale oh, world you need yeah. to live in the one that's here and be ready for it when it comes 100% yeah. because I'll tell you what there's nobody going to there's nobody going to hand you anything yeah yeah no. absolutely yeah. You know and you know what they it. will hand you hardship <laughs> pain yeah like yeah. I mean like you you think you have it sorted like sometimes you think you, and this is what worry, and I'm always saying this like I worry about my young lad more than my kids I worry about my girls as well but I thought that I had got through stuff in my life that I got, I got through that. Rest is fucking easy. Mm. And then stuff sideswipes you. It's mm. like, you know, you lose your father, mm. stuff with business, mm. growing pains, the stress of life at home, mm. time, work. And as a man, mm. I don't have the, I can't, I can't sit at home. I can't feel sorry for myself. I do in my own little way. I know what you mean. But I still have to go. I know what you mean now. I can't just stop. Yeah. But sometimes I do think you're better off at that because... Keeping busy. 100% hey. Because if you lie on things... Like even talking hey. Again, if I'm speaking to you about a problem that I have, I'll be thinking about that conversation when I'm doing something else like. Mm -hmm. And it'll manifest in my head and the next thing I'm round in circles again. Mm -hmm. So I don't under, I don't think the talking is the be all and end on it either. I think men should be should I think men need to learn how to manage problems like that as as if they were fixing something in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's the way men process things like. Men are, are wild for fixing things. And if we can't fix things we we go in a and do a Yeah, we a spin. I think we, we we do not manage ourselves correctly unless no. we're carrying a load. That's right. Unless we have something to work towards. A hundred percent. We deem meaningful enough to put ourselves through the shit. Yeah. To do it. Yeah. And that, like I think say I lost my father there not too long ago. Mm, that's right. And it's it's an eye opener. Oh, it is, sure. And then you have stuff happen with work, and I was there. Oh, I thought this is for. I don't know what to do here, and I'm and I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it to affect me as much as it did. There you go. Mm. And then I had to keep pushing. I had some, and even now, like I'm there thinking, Jesus, what is wrong with me? Why can't I focus? <laughs> and and, you know, and the only time that I focus mm. is when I'm actually focused yeah. on what I'm doing. There you go. Like my most calm times now where I'm busy at work. Hi. I That's I what I'm saying. I went back to work and I was grand and then I took one day off. I took one day off to spend with the kids and it was the most horrific head, day <laughs> I ever I, I mean it, I everything came come back came back to me. All the problems that I was having from work were there. Just did I do this? Did I have this? Jesus did that stock better come in or you need to be better off at work because you're thinking about work probably. Yeah, yeah. And then you feel like you're you're faint. Now I'm lucky enough. I have a wife that knows. She knows me. She uh, knows. That's that good. Uh. David's clearing his head by <laughs> fucking off. <laughs> <laughs> he he's going doing that. Mm. Like I got to work this morning. I worked all day and one night. Drove straight back here. But I don't have time to dwell on how sorry I feel for for myself. Mm. Yeah, no, I get you. I, I wait until I go to bed tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it, like. Yeah. Well, that's it. But, like, you know, if you do, if you stop working, so the bread stops coming and then there's more problems. So mm. you're better off. You're better off at something. Definitely. Hey. Idle mind. You watch the idle mind. Hey. So are you your own producer? No, 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 no. Uh, Voltel Studios, Tommy Conway, Mountain Top, Larry Kenny. The amount of show hosts in this one is <laughs> fucking shocking. I'm, I'm not, gonna, I'm gonna I'm make some money. I'm, I'm gonna make up. some money I, in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe in anybody out. What's your first album's called? First album called? Give out before you give up. And your second one? I don't know yet. What is your favorite song of all time? Yeah. Oh. Oh jeez, I don't, I don't really know. The, the changes, do you know what I mean? Changes at this at this moment in time. I'm talking to you. Do you like Backstreet Boys? And <laughs> sync, <laughs> and sync guy. Do you um, like a bit more Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> uh, Bruce isn't bad. I, I don't know. Hey, like do you know, without sounding like complete. Your favorite song is probably the one that you're working on at the minute. Do you know what I mean? Your, you, your, your goes goes round and round your head. That's one thing I've noticed. Hey. But my head, when I'm going well at the music, right, and I'm writing, the head's a great thing, because it goes round and round and round until you get it. You, ever, you, ever, you know what I mean? Mm. It goes round when you're put something good, but see then when you get something bad, the head is going round, and it's the worst thing ever. Do you notice that? Mm. Uh, that? I don't know, I would say the new one I'm doing now, I'm recording on Friday, that's probably, like there was no, there wouldn't be another song that would come into my head. Did you find it hard to... Perform for the first time after your man passed. 
Well, I I uh, I sang at my mom's funeral. Did you get through it? And she said she goes, she went. I was raging, and she asked me, "Hey, raging." Did like, you get through it? I did, I did, and I I that was hard. That was hard. That was that was hard. Did it change you? Yeah. And did you write a song about her? Yeah. Have you released it? I have. I have. What's it called? I'll be there for you. Shane, it? Shane, Shane, Shane was telling me that's his favorite one. Is that your favorite song? Um, ah, it would be, but I find it very hard to do that. And I find it very hard to sing that. And I, I was looking at it and I said, "Not listening to that." <laughs> really? Yeah. Not ready yet. Like it would be me. Like I would be like. Like oh, at terms, or do you know what it is? It would mean the most to me. That one. Do you know? It would mean the most to me. It would hit me in the. It would hit you in the feels, like. Yeah. Do you know? I can't tell you to this. Hey, you can't listen to it. Can't listen to it at all. Or on the way. Do you believe in God? I do. Um, do you go to mass? Uh, well, not as much as I should. Like, <laughs> not as much as I should. But uh, I definitely believe in God. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, what do you think happens when you die? I haven't a clue. Hey. I'm not that smart. I was going to ask you a question I ask everyone, but God. I don't have to because I know the answer. <laughs> if you could make one phone call to heaven, who would oh, you? you know the answer there. Yeah. Uh, would you rather be hated for being yourself or love for someone else? I know the answer oh, to that. Oh, I hate it. Hate me. Get into me veins. <laughs> love it. <laughs> What's something that you're holding on to that you need to let go? Jesus. That's deep, boys. What's something I'm holding on to? Hmm. Me leg. I know. I was going to say, it's not that deep when the answer to Mickey. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. Me leg, I. <laughs> Something, do you want to write one? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, I would have a lot of fucking rage, like. A lot of rage about. What makes you mostly, what, what causes you the most rage? Thinking about how my mother died, like. And for a few other things, but I'm not talking about them. But I would, I would say that would, if I think about that long enough, like I would go through that wall there. But it, I would, have you, would just put me off my head. Have like. you a girlfriend? No. Um, you lonely? No. <laughs> busy. For too busy. Would you like to have kids? Yeah. Uh, how many would you have? A oh, hundred. Sure, we need to repopulate the world. <laughs> we are run now, people. We will. I'm telling you. Um, if your life was a movie, what scene would you play over and over again? Uh, if my life was a movie, and my life, like yeah, if your life so far was a movie, what scene would you replay over and over again? Um, gee, okay. You're good at these, hey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, hey. Um, probably something to do along. Something, do you know what? Hey, something to do along the lines of um, when all my gang was growing up, were were good enough at football, like something along those lines. Something, some memory that belonged to that, because those were damn good days. Like you're not a care in the world, like something along those lines. I would replay that in my head a good bit, like. Who do you trust most with your life? My father. Um, <laughs> uh, who brings you the most happiness in your life? Who brings me the most happiness in my life? Jesus. Where are you getting these, man? <laughs> uh... I don't know. I don't want to say that because if I say who gives me the most happiness, then the other ones then will be saying, "Oh, you didn't say me for that." So I don't know. I take happiness from everything. Like, do you know what I mean? It's hard to put pinpoint one thing. I'm more of a more of a kind of a I take away bits and pieces. Like, you know what I mean? Ten years, you can have whatever you want. What do you have? Where freedom. are you in life? Freedom. Are you performing any big gigs? Does that appeal to you? It does. Of course, it does. But. More so at to what, reach more at people. What cost? Do you know? Like I'm going to keep talking the way I'm talking to keep doing what I'm doing. And if that's good enough to make it to the big gigs, that's that's class. Do you know? But if that's not good enough, I'm content enough where I am. Like you know what I mean? I'm not like 
I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, I have to, I have to do this and I have to make it to the, I'm going to be the best thing slice. No, I'll just keep going the way I'm going. I spin I'm doing all right so far. And if that's good enough to bring me further, fantastic. If not, if this is it, I'm content. I'm happy out. Like, when was the last time you cried? Uh, gee, Mike. I don't know, I think it might have been, it was a graveyard mass. I think it was a graveyard mass, huh? It might be a couple of weeks ago. Maybe in three weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe. Cried at the grave, yeah. Michael, how did you find that? <laughs> Jeez, that was intense. <laughs> <laughs> that was so intense. Mother of God. Where's your next few gigs? Oh, mother of God. Hey. I was like, what are you going to come out with, man? <laughs> Uh, where am I going now? I'm playing Gardens and Manor Hamilton on Saturday night and then I'm in <clears throat> I'm in uh, Urbanstown and then I can arms on Saturday then I'm away out to uh, so my uh, Wrath and Island I think it is where? Wrath and Island did you ever hear of it? Oh, where the fuck is that? oh lads you just have to go to Wrath and hey. it's off the coast of Antrim oh it's in Ireland I thought it was somewhere in Iraq <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounds like aye uh, well <laughs> I'm in there now another day and then I'm in Dungiven then all the gigs are on me. Insta man. Will you I come up? Will you come to one? I will absolutely. I'll go with you. Would you come? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I come when are, when are you crack. around next? You're probably not down here that much. I'll have no. to go up to Donegal. No, do, you know, do you know what? Tell you, we'll sort we'll sort one or two right. My here. brother's in the band, you know. Right. Bet you didn't know that. No. There's there's <laughs> yeah. a lot I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh he knows Daniel well. So get ah. you in contact with him. Ah, I know. Did you ever hear of Sean Cuddy? The singer. Yeah, that's your day. He's my brother. Right. Yeah, know, we yeah. came out of the same hall. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's nearly 60, though. Uh, yeah. Hanging out with Daniel. Hanging out with Daniel. Daniel's some crack. Daniel's some man. Yeah, I like him. He's good crack. Isn't it mental how famous he is? Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> but you're high, wouldn't you be? Sure, he's class. Do you see him in Dermot Bannon? What? Do you see him on that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, room to right here. Like, come on. You talk about sayings. I know, I know. <laughs> What a man. Like. Sure, I I go to Mayo a good bit, right? I like Mayo. Uh, and talking to older people there is a joy. It's a complete joy. I it's agree with you. It's an absolute joy. I was talking uh, to this old man on the street, and he actually knew my brother from going to gigs. And I genuinely, it was the most melodic, the, more, the nicest words. It, it was uh, just, uh, it was like poetry. Yeah. No clue speaking. what he really was saying. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Because I was missing half of it, but it was nice to hear. It really oh, was. Strong accent, like. Mm. Mm. Well, Michael, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Not a bother, hey. You'll Pleasure. come on again. Oh, sure. And you will. bring the guitar. I should have. Right. I'll bring the next time, sure. Bring the guitar the next time uh, and we'll, we'll have a sing song. Uh, I'll be in the background going, I'll <laughs> 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 we'll take you on tour yet. I'd love to go on tour. No. Right. Thanks a million. No bother, sir. Sound. All right. Good luck and I'll see you all next week. <laughs>